Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Now today we're going to take a look at the final two groups of nodes in the uh, compositor. And in order to do that, I'm just going to use the newest version of Blender. So let's just go to splash screen and let me see. It's revision 47940. Okay, so make sure you have a version that's newer than that. You can get it from a Blender, uh, from, from uh, graphical.org. And yeah, then you can follow along because there are a few new features that we're going to cover today. And then let's just uh, hit F12 here to just render something, really doesn't matter. And let's just go to the note editor. Let's go to the compositor, use notes, backdrop. Control shift, left click, then you can actually see the viewer. Now, one thing that is new is uh, that you can now give your uh, notes a custom color. Okay, so you can just select the note and say, I want this color to be green or blue or red, or you can use a color preset, but you have to, I think, create them yourself. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now, the notes we're going to talk about today are the, gr is the group node and the layout. And you can see here we have three different layout nodes. And if you have the uh, official release of Blender from blender.org, you will only see frame without reroute and switch, and even frame changed a little in this last release or in the last few releases. So uh, this is really crucial that you have the actual version to follow this tutorial. Now, let's just do something here. Not something that makes, makes a lot of sense, but let's just say we have, I don't know, Let's select a normal pass. Let's hit F12 there. Let's go to the node editor. Let's hit color mix nodes. I don't know. Let's just um, use the normals over there. And let's just, according to those normals, mix in some red or something. Like this. And now let's also use a converter color ramp. Just so we have, a, just so we have a few nodes in our scene. Actually, let's just multiply that over there. Here we go. Just something. And um, now let's say this is like one, um, one step in our process, okay? What we can do now, we can just select all those nodes and hit Control G and, and then create a new group. And now they are one group. Now you can tab, you can use the tab key on your keyboard and close that node and reopen it again. And um, this way you can manipulate them all at once. What you can also do, for example, now is just hit M and you can see it. your render is no longer being affected by that at all. So this is an easy way to mute a whole uh, group of nodes, uh, sorry, without um, caring about all the individual nodes. And this is also much easier to um, organize your scene because then if you have node groups, you don't have so many nodes to take care of. It just looks much more organized, okay. Now, let's say for this layer, it is, we don't really need the node groups. So let's just, with Alt-G, delete it. So it's gone. Next thing is under... And you can see, by the way, the node group still is over here. So we can now select that. And you can see this is our node group. We can delete it. Shift-A, group. And it's back here. What we can also do is use the... Um, link function or the append function the append function with shift f1 now we, i can just go to another uh, to another uh, blender file for example doesn't really matter just any file go to node tree or to you can also um, link in or append other objects but in this case we go to node tree and we could select some node group like this double click uh, shift f1 node group 4 Exactly. Now we've appended that. Now with Shift A under Group, you can see we can add node group 004 or 006. And now you can see that node group is now in here. And we can delete it. Okay. Next thing is layout. And let's start with the frame. Now the frame changed a little since this the last few revisions. So uh, let's just work with this one because it's it's going to be the future and it's really awesome. If you have a frame, it really doesn't do anything on its own. But you can add things onto it. For example, you can add this normal node. 
just uh, drop it onto the frame and you can now see the frame moves along with this um, normal node but also um, the, f the normal node moves with the frame. Now this doesn't make a lot of sense this way, right? So the trick is that you can add different nodes onto the frame. So now for example you can also add the color node, uh, the color ramp and the multiply node. And now you can see if you move one of the nodes inside, you can see the frame um, automatically shrinks around those nodes. Now you can prevent that effect by selecting the frame and unchecking shrink. And then you can see it no longer uh, shrinks back. It just, it expands of course, otherwise uh, the nodes would leave the frame, but it no longer goes back. Uh, but now you can manually um, change that. Okay. I'm not sure why it moves this way. I'm sure it's not supposed to do that. I, or I think maybe it's a bug, but anyway. Now let's just turn shrink back on because it's much cooler this way. It's really, really handy. Now you might think, mm, this is pretty cool, but how, how am I going to get notes off that? And there are two ways, actually. It's either grabbing that and hitting Alt-P, and I can see it just left the frame. Now you can just move it around freely and just drop it back on if you want. Or Alt-F. And if you hit Alt F, it automatically goes into um, the moving tool. And when you're in the moving tool, by the way, you can um, click on your middle mouse wheel and keep it clicked. Then you can move it along this axis or along this axis. Okay. So let's just move that onto there but once again. Now this is the first tool, the frame. And now you can actually just rename the frame and label it, for example, useless notes and I have my caps lock on let me just try it again use less notes like this and now it's actually named next thing uh, let's just delete that frame actually next thing that's also fairly cool is the reroute this is something uh, we we've waited for for a long time because up to now we always use a different technique and I'm just going to show you what it is in a second you can see right now those notes they don't look so clean now the first thing you have to do, I showed you that before, is to go to File, um, User Preferences, Themes, Node Editor. Let me see where it is. Over here, Noodle Curving to Zero. We don't want Noodle Curving, at least I don't. But it's, 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 it's cleaner now, but it's still not perfect. So if you want to have a very clean routing, Noodle routing, you can use this. Okay, And you can, for example, drop that in there like this, and you can even duplicate it over here. And now you could actually plug that in there, plug that in there, and plug that in there. And you can see actually that those um, reroute points automatically take on the color um, of, of, of the value they're going to reroute, in this case, um, a, no, um, a vector. And then, for example, you could just duplicate that over there, over there, over there. And I'm, I'm going a little bit overboard right now. But you could do something like this, for example. And then you can just move that to there, that to there, that to there, and that to there. Now, those points, they don't do anything. They just reroute your noodle so it looks a bit cleaner. Okay, that's all they're doing. And I think they do a great job. One other thing you can achieve with that is also quite cool. Let's just say, um, let's actually delete all those. You can also just go to Shift G, select all by type. In this case, select all those reroute points and just delete them so they're gone. Let's say you have multiple nodes there for whatever reason and you have the same input into all of them, like this, for example. And let's say we also have the same alpha input for each of these nodes, or those nodes. I don't really know why that would be, but let's just imagine it's, it's going to be that way. Um, this doesn't look very clean. In fact, it looks very, very ugly and quite horribly. Now, what we can do, we can just delete all that, and we can just add in reroute points. One over there, and one over there. Now we're going to plug in the image into that reroute point the alpha into that reroute point, and then we can just go about it this way.
And this looks indeed much cleaner than before. And I can also move them to however you want. Like this makes even more sense. And this is really a clean way of actually setting up your noodles and managing them. And the final thing is the switch. Let's say you would like to, you're not sure if you want to use the alpha input there or the C input. In this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but you never know. What you can do, you can just put in a switch, a switch, put in the C value in there, and now you can just switch that, okay? And you can see if we connect that to the viewer, it switches between alpha, C, alpha, C, alpha, C, and so on. And dependent on that, of course, the node spits out something else. So that's the switch tool, which is also the switch node, which is also quite handy. So these are basically your ways of organizing your um, compositor, okay? And they are very handy. Um, one thing I might also show you, uh, kind of a combination here. For example, let's say you have depth of field. You have depth of field. Let me just delete that and actually that and that as well. Let's say you have a depth of field node, defocus like this. And let's say you have a second depth of field node, for whatever reason that would be, but there some kind, sometimes there are such cases. Let's say in the first one you want to blur the image, in the second one you want to blur the C-pass, which is something I needed to do before. And then you need to see for that one as well, and for over there. Okay, like this. And then let's just say you also want to, for example, do some um, use some vector blur on the scene, put in the image right there, and then the C pass right there, and then the speed right there. And let's say you wanna, you don't wanna make a group out of this, but you just you just wanna um, keep them together. So let's just add in a frame. Like this, and that one as well, and that one as well. Now you can move that around. But once again, those noodles are just annoying. So we can also, of course, add in a, a reroute and put that onto the frame as well. Like this, okay. Now you can, for example, take the image right there. And then we can duplicate that. Then we can use the C pass right there. And what you can also do, even though it's not really necessary, you can just, um, actually this one as well, we can just duplicate that again and do the same thing with the normal pass. Not because um, we use it to um, separate that into separate into different uh, noodles, but just because to reroute it to make it look cleaner. Now if you put that to over there and that to over there, you can see this looks much cleaner than before. And that's actually the goal of this whole organizing. So this is our uh, result right now. We can move it uh, around quite easily and without all those things, let's just delete that, control X, control X, control X, you can see it looks much more messy, it's much harder to control. So yeah, this is the basic use of organizing, or that's why you want to organize your uh, compositor or just notes in your note editor. It also works the same way for um, material notes and texture notes, but more about those in a future tutorial. So yeah, I think this is quite an important step to bring some clarity and some um, organization into your notes. So I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any kind of questions or comments, post them in the, in the comment section below the videos. And yeah, see you next time. Bye.